welcome back into the studio. Today I am going to start showing you a new series, Lark, and specifically this video is about the tab binding. So you're going to see these are very chunky pieces of cardboard and I discovered uh, through others this method of binding called tab binding. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to measure the size of your pages. And you'll see here I'm taking my notes and getting those measurements down. The beauty of this method of binding, it is it's so versatile. And because it's so versatile, sometimes it can be a little tricky once you'd make the decision about how you want to work. So I've taken the measurements of my pages and I've decided I could fit five tabs on here. And I want half of my tabs to be in this lace that you see and half of my tabs are gonna be in some canvas. So now I'm just deciphering how um, wide each of these tabs need to be um, in to fill the space. And I've chosen to go with two of the lace and three of the canvas. And I always suggest that when you're um, doing a tab binding, you always go with an odd number of tabs and you always start with your strongest to the outside edge. So your top edge and your bottom edge. Um, and you'll see that here in just a minute. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a test of the size of the tab. So I've selected that because the lace is an inch and a half that I should go with an inch and a half on the canvas. And I'm going to cut that out and double check and make sure that fits on my binding edge, the long edge of um, these chunky pieces of cardboard. Another measurement that's really critical is to measure the distance from the front cover to your first page. So around the binding edge, this me measurement will be the length of your tab. So I've decided that a good length should be about three inches. And you're gonna see here that I'm gonna test that. Make sure you add as much distance as you need, taking into account the opening and closing. You want your tab to fold over the front cover and be visible. The excess amount beyond the binding edge will be visible on the front of each surface. And since my tabs are three inches total length, one inch will show on the front of each surface and one e inch will show on the back of each surface. So the next step is you want to go through and put all your pages in your preferred order. So the cover is the first one you see, then you flip it over, you have page one, page two, page three, etc. So you're going to put that in the order that you want it to appear when it's finished. Now we're going to label all the top surfaces. Now we're going to start to describe these as surfaces or pieces, um, not by page because we are dealing with just the top surfaces to begin with. So what I did was uh, just put a sticky note or a tab on it that says your cover will be surface number one. Your next piece will be surface number two, etc. Now we need to calculate how many tabs of each you're going to need. So I had uh, seven physical pieces. Four of those pieces are in sequence one, so three tabs each. So I calculate that at four times three is equal to 12 canvas tabs. For sequence two, we do the same calculation. Now, because I am going to create on these pieces after I've done the binding, well, I'm gonna integrate my binding into the design of each piece. I am gonna go ahead and go through and give a bit of gesso to the top surface of each of these. And I'm gonna speed up during this process because really my focus on this video is the binding itself. So I'm gonna get all my pages, not just my pieces, my surfaces, but I'm going to get all my pages 
gessoed and then we'll come back to the binding. Okay, so now the uh, pages are all gessoed and I have pulled out all my tabs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you that we are working in two different sequences. So for example, the page labeled number one or the surface labeled number one will be in sequence one. Sequence one pages will be odd numbers. The pages labeled two or the surfaces labeled two will be in sequence two or S2. S2 pages will all be even numbered. So since I'm doing my odd numbers in canvas, sequence one will be odd numbered pieces of canvas. And here I am adhering my canvas tabs down onto surface number one. So like I said, you want the odd number to start at the top and make sure one is at the bottom. And so you'll see this first tab is going to the very top of my page and the last tab will go to the very bottom. This helps secure. So I know that I have one inch that needs to go over the surface and I leave the rest, the other two inches hanging off the bound edge. These we'll deal with in the end after we're done creating the journal itself. First of all, I do want to get these tabs on here because I'm going to integrate them into the design work that I'm doing um, in um, for this journal. So I'm gonna, I've got these labeled here so you can see what the sequencing is. Since I went with five tabs, my sequence one are in positions one, three, and five. So that's what these are right here. The canvas tabs are in positions one, three, and five on my odd number um, surfaces. And not all tab binding is going to be this confusing. Um, the, the beauty of tab binding, it is so versatile and it can be used for real simple. You can use all the same types of tabs. Uh, you are still going to be using those in different sequences because uh, that's how the nature of the binding works. But um, and you don't have to adhere them then work in the journal. You can adhere them after you're done and they could be a secondary element that comes into your page. So it really depends on what you are wanting and those are good uh, questions to ask yourself, decisions to make prior to starting on a journal that you want to use tab binding in. Alright, so our first uh, surface is done and we're moving on to our second surface. So we are going to change it up a little bit. We're going to be going using the lace into our sequence two. First I am kind of positioning it to see how it's going to fit in with those other tabs. My sequence position two or S2 tabs are in positions two and four on my even number of surfaces two, four, six, etc. As you can see here, I am in hearing sequence two tabs down onto the surface of my first even surface, surface number two. So really I am concentrating while I'm putting these down on keeping my one inch that's adhered to surface two and making sure that that lace tab is positioned between what I see of the canvas tabs in sequence one from the surface number one. I want it all to integrate 
kindly with each other. Now that I've got those, um, our two sequences, the first two sequences completed, and we put them together here in the order that they will appear on the finished piece, you can really see how this is gonna work. It's rather very simple. The sequence one tabs are gonna go around surface two and adhere to the back side, but we're not gonna complete that until I'm done creating this entire journal. And surface two, or sequence two, tabs will fold around from surface two around surface three, etc. So now we're just going to continue on. I'm on an odd surface. So S1 are on odd surface and that's the canvas tabs and I'm going to get those here and I'm going to continue on through all my pages in this pattern. Listed below in my description box is all the supplies that I've used on this piece. Links are listed to my Etsy store or an affiliate link, but I only link to products that I have used, tested, or that I prefer to use. I may receive a small compensation, but there is never any additional cost to you. By using these links, you help me put supplies on my art table and keep my channel content coming. Thank you so much for watching. So here you see that sequence two tabs in lace are going from surface two to surface three. Sequence one tabs from surface one folded over and went um, from surface one to surface two. And now surface three, sequence one tabs will fold over and go eventually onto the surface or excuse me, the back surface of surface four. Here I'm demonstrating how important it is to first figure out the distance that you need um, between your pages once they're open. Um, this is gonna matter when you're adhering for the final time the back the other side of the tabs onto the back side of the surfaces um, you need to have enough distance that your page can lay open and flat without buckling so you need to find that distance that works for you with your surfaces your whatever your substrates are for your pages um, if they were this close here um, there wouldn't be any um, room for you to manipulate those um, or add any additional texture. So here I am just kind of going through, making sure everything fits with all my final pages, um, checking out that distance that I'm going to need. And because this is gonna get really elevated here, <laughs> um, because I am working with such chunky um, surface material um, you can really see how that's going to play um, into how these go together this concludes part one of tab binding keep an eye out for tab binding part two coming soon on the final end screen you will see there is a video listed there and that is another video showing tab binding in a much simpler uh, journal